we asked you what you wanted the world to know about autism and this is your chance to tell John, Trudy, Christine and then the rest of the world uh, what you want them to know about autism and we'll share that as widely as we can on World Autism Day on Friday. Uh, the order of the, uh, the meeting is going to be, I'm going to ask uh, John, then Trudy, then Christine, just for some opening remarks about uh, what World Autism Day means to them and why they're, uh, why they're pleased to be here today. And then I will uh, come around and ask for your messages. And I know some of you would like me to read your messages and I've had some sent to us. So um, I will take them in order as we've sent round. Then we'll ask John, Trudy and Christine to reflect on what you've told them. Uh, and to give their own thoughts about what they want the world to know about autism. And then I know we've got a few questions for our special guests, uh, which we'll ask them towards the end. So without further ado, um, I will now hand over to uh, the charity's founder and our biggest, most passionate supporter and somebody who has you know, led us to where we are today uh, by founding the charity 21 years ago and ask him what World Autism Day means for him. So John, over to you. And I think um, the more we educate people about autism, the better. And from a Cordwell children point of view, the more that we can improve the lives of any children, not just autistic children, but any children, the better for us. That's our whole objective. And we hope that we continue to make uh, the lives of autistic families and autistic children a lot, lot better over the years to come. Thank you, John. That's a uh, really good intro to the charity's commitment over a long time uh, and why we're so passionate about autism. And perfectly leading on from that uh, is the chief exec from day one, Trudy Beswick. Um, if you could tell us what, the, what's, what this means to you and what World Autism Day itself means to you. So World Autism Day and World Autism Week is about listening and hopefully and it's called stakeholder engagement is the formal word for it, but it's actually listening to the people that need the services, need the change. And it's more important now than ever with the pandemic. So that's what World Autism um, is about. It's about people understanding those hidden conditions. And disability is very much uh, known about disabilities, but those hidden disabilities, I think are still hidden. And I think people need to understand more about more, more about neurodivergent conditions. And so hopefully people can start to understand them. But I think people have to celebrate our differences. We're all different, we're all individual. And I think if we can get corporate, public, um, and everybody to celebrate each individual differences, then there will be less room, there'll be more understanding in the world. And this is a, a moment to shine, and a moment to share, a moment to understand, a moment to create new services, and a moment to create change. And that's what Call of the War is all about. Thank you, Trudy. Um, again, really a great insight into why the charity is so passionate about helping autistic people. Um, and now uh, it's great to hand over to uh, Christine McGuinness, our new uh, ambassador here at Cordwell Children to tell us a little bit about her relationship with autism and why World Autism Day itself is important to her. Thank you, Christy. I think it's, it's so important to me as a parent of three autistic children. Obviously, I see this from much more of a personal view. I live with autism. Um, all three of my children were diagnosed quite young. And when they were diagnosed, I'm ashamed to admit that I knew absolutely nothing about autism. I'd never seen anyone talking about it in the press, really. Um, I, I just didn't know much about it. So even though the signs were really, really obvious with my children, for me, I just seen it as little quirks and their little ways. And I, I saw all the little symptoms of autism. I just saw it as them being quite cute. And, and I love that they're unique and different. I've never seen it as a problem. So for me, it was never something that I felt like I needed to flag up because it wasn't right. So when they got the autism diagnosis, it was quite a shock for me. And I think now that I understand it more, and I know the dates of this week every year, I look forward to it. I see it as being so, so important so that other parents like me 
we'll we'll hopefully have heard more about it. I think if we can raise more awareness, we'll get more understanding. More children might get diagnosed sooner. I know quite a lot of families where the children haven't been diagnosed until they're into the teenage years. And the guilt that the parents feel because they've missed it is simply because they, they haven't seen the signs out there enough. So for me, this week and, and World Autism Day is just all about trying to get the message out there so people can see it, they can recognise it and they'll understand it because one day my three autistic children are going to be autistic adults. Thank you very much, Christine. That's, uh, that's really insightful and it, it does really frame what we're here to do today perfectly uh, to make sure that more people understand autism and accept it and embrace it uh, where we can. And now we've heard from uh, three special guests, but it's really time to hand over to the, the very special guests and the reason that we're all here, because it was the uh, children and young people that we work with at Cordwell Children that said that they wanted a platform. They wanted to tell people what they felt about their own autism. Um, so it's going to be uh, now time to hand over to them. And I'm going to start with reading out one of the messages that we got sent. Um, because obviously in the middle of the day, some of our younger beneficiaries can't be with us because they're in school, but they still were passionate about sharing things about their own autism. And this was uh, sent in by Charlie, for, who attends our short breaks classes. Um, he says... Autism means I see, feel, and hear the world differently to most people. This makes the world an amazing but sometimes scary place for me. Some of the things I find hard are controlling my emotions and understanding other people. Making friends is difficult for me, and I prefer things to stay the, stay the same. Change can be scary for me. Sometimes I need you to be patient with me. Some days I wish that autism would go away because it can be hard to manage, and people can be unkind to me. I'm also proud to be autistic because it's part of who I am. It helps me to be creative and passionate about things I enjoy. I'm good at seeing small details in things. I love reading and making and building things. I would like people to understand me better and be kinder to others like me. We just want to be friends. If I'm on the playground by myself, please ask if I'm okay. Sometimes I want to play, but I don't know when to join in. All people should be treated with kindness and being different is a good thing. If we were all the same, life would be boring. I think that's a, a great introduction as to uh, one person's perspective of autism. And I'd like to uh, ask Alice, um, who's an ambassador and has uh, attended many of our short breaks as well over the years, has been a, a really important part of our child consultation uh, over the last five or six years. Uh, to tell us what you think, Alice, about autism. Hi. Um, what I want the world to know about autism is that people with autism can be happy and successful if they're given the right support. Um, autism is a spectrum, so some people are helped by sensory items, which encourage them to communicate with those around them. Other people on the spectrum are helped by having support and finding the right job and keeping it. Um, when the world makes adjustments and shows understanding, it helps an autistic person have more value and even be an asset to society. That was very good, very succinct. Well done, Alice. Um, and now yeah. we've got, uh, next is uh, Sam, who we've got with us, but he would like me to read his comments. Um, uh, for context, Sam is 23, and he said, I want the world to know I was diagnosed with autism at two years of age, but it is only recently that I started to understand how it affects me. I now believe that I am dedicated in all that I do, including my creative writing and when doing work properly. So that was, uh, that was Sam's uh, comment about how it's taken such a long time for him to understand is autism. Now uh, we've got Connor. Uh, so if Connor, you would like to uh, tell us what you think. Good afternoon. What I want, what I would like the world to know about autism is that 
the world has to understand people with autism may have problems with how they communicate with to other people and feel also feel anxious about different environments but once they get settled in to that environment they are able to join up with a group and they can still make a valid independent contribution to working alongside all in society. And I would like to offer a question to John Caldwell. As someone who employs lots of people, what advice would you give to employees when considering hiring autistic people in this day and age? Well, I think one thing we know for sure is that um, people with autism often have some very, very highly sensed skills, uh, different from the average person, but different in a good way in, in some cases, and uh, I've got lot of value, uh, lots of values to add. But I think in any society, we have to have a humanitarian spirit and we all have to help each other. If people are helped and supported, they can be valuable, make a valuable contribution. Um, and that's what I'd like to see employers do more and more. Thanks, John, that's a, a, a great answer. And thank you, Connor, uh, for offering your comment and also for that question, that's really great. Uh, now that a couple of people who've uh, who weren't comfortable in uh, reading their comments out. So Katie, who's 17, wanted me to say that uh, she wants the world to know that autism is an invisible disability because you can't tell just by looking at people that they are autistic. And then we've got Rian. She said, no two autistic children are the same. My younger sibling is autistic and he is completely different to me as a child. And we shouldn't be grouped together because of our autism, but because of our childhood experiences. And then Ben, uh, who was unfortunately not able to attend in the end today, um, he said, all people with autism spectrum disorder should not be treated the same as we all have different types of problems, some good and easy to deal with and some difficult and hard to deal with. Autism is not just black and white. It is co all colours of the rainbow. You may think we are all one in the same, but no. This has been proven that we are all different and we also wish to tr be treated normally like everyone else. But some of us do need help. and Some of us don't ask for help. And there are some of us that don't even know that there is any help available. I think it is important for all people with autism to know this. We will move on to Cameron's uh, comment and uh, Cameron just wanted to uh, make sure everybody knew that we are all individuals and we all have unique personalities and then we've got Lucy who's with us but unfortunately she's got a sore throat so uh, she wanted me to read her comment out as well and hers was I think it's important to remember that someone with autism is all is a person as well and it doesn't define them I also want the world to know that they should take a chance on someone with autism and employ them. Um, Lucy is one of our digital skills uh, learners, so she's working hard with Michael and the rest of the uh, team to learn new skills and find uh, a job at the end of it. Um, I'm now pleased to say that we've got uh, Ollie, uh, who wrote something and sent it to us, but she... Ollie's here with his mum, Amy, and would like to read it out. <laughs> Are you ready, Ollie? Yeah, I'll just read it out myself, you know. Okay. okay. Go for it. Okay, can I say my name and my age first? Yeah, <laughs> I feel kind of the same as Alice, a little bit nervous too. <laughs> Do you want to tell me your name and your age first? Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> my name's Ollie and I'm 11. Um, and this is what I want the world to know about autism. Um, it's a condition you can have. It makes my brain work differently. My brain will worries more sometimes, and I don't always understand what people say. 
I like asking people quiz questions, <laughs> learning about flags, countries and capital cities and remembering facts. Autism is good. Well, for me, of course. Um, I, I don't think about my autism much because I am who I am. Well done, Ollie. That was really, really good. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. If we can teach kindness and make people tolerant and understanding of other people's differences and kind as a consequence, then the world will be a very different place. We won't need to think about racism or religious differences, or in my case, ginger hair and freckles, or in your case, autism. We'll all be, even if not understood, we'll all be treated more kindly. And if we could all be treated more kindly, then that's a giant step forward for mankind. Trudy, uh, can I pass to you to have some thoughts from you, please? Clearly from the beginning, we need to have a clear pathway for diagnosis before, during and post and for interventions. I think that would be a huge help. And I think that needs to be totally transparent. Um, those. And I think obviously for nationally and internationally, we need to have this awareness of hidden disabilities. And that's something that we're talking about at the UN and trying to raise the awareness um, and Cordwell children are involved in that. Um, I think from a UK point of view, we're campaigning to have the cabinet minister for children and for families. And so I think that's highly important that we push very hard on that. And I think everything that you've said here today towards that, we need your input on that because this comes back to where Cordwell children believe that children, young people and families are the, the heart of all of this. Uh, really, uh, really well put and some clear objectives for us all to be a part of there. Um, and so, Christine, how do you reflect on what you've heard today and what you want the world to know about autism? I think the main message what I've got from hearing everyone speak today is, especially the, the autistic people, is that they just want to be understood and with the right support they believe that they can be which is amazing it was really really lovely to hear them speak I think we need more of that because you know John and Trudy can speak from a charity I can speak as a parent but everything that I've done recently there's not many actually autistic people speaking and it's only them really who can say how they feel and I understand and I'm sensitive to the fact that they may not all be comfortable on camera, some might not want to speak, but for those that do, I would say, you know, use your voice loud and proud because we're leaning off you. Um, thank you for having me on here. It's, it's been lovely to speak. As a mom, it's not very often I get to speak to other adults. And I know there was a mom on here somewhere. Is it Ollie's mom? Hi, Ollie. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I just wanted to give a big shout out to the mum because I know how difficult it is, but you've done absolutely amazing with him. He's an absolute star. Um, you've done incredible. You should be very, very proud. Have we got time for a question? Just quickly. Um, something I haven't done yet is told my children that they're autistic. So I wonder what age you've done that. Did Ollie know for himself? Um, you, can you can you give me something? At least something I'm going to have to do at some point. Um, we were hoping that maybe Ollie might join the dots between some of yeah behaviours he saw with other autistic children, and he <laughs> did notice that he did some behaviours that other children with autism also did. Um, but in the end, we did eventually explicitly talk about it. And yeah. Say, probably about 10 and a half so not that long yeah. ago really but it wasn't really a big shock I don't think to Ollie you know we've always been we've always gone to support groups with other children with autism um, and so he's seen lots of children with autism that present very differently you know? yeah that, that's exactly like mine they're around yeah. so many children with all different disabilities that they don't see anyone as being any different and I love that and I'm hoping that when it comes to that moment it won't be a big shock yeah. Um, like, like Ollie he's clearly quite happy and proud and, and it's brilliant that you've embraced it the way that you do and yeah. um, you've been 
hopefully something that I inspire for me and my children in the future so thank you so much it's been lovely speaking to you today thanks so much that is such a lovely thing to say it's it's a journey for everybody isn't it you know and we really have embraced it and sort of really she doesn't have to know every single detail <laughs> And <laughs> say like about one or something. Oh. I think the world were not only there. Oh like, my ears! I know. Oh, like, Ollie, mums don't get this time to talk that often. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, bless you. What, what a great way to end today's uh, meeting. I just want to say a final thank you to John, Trudy, Christine, but most of all, all of you uh, beneficiaries, children, young people, whatever you prefer to be called because it was really important that we heard from you. So thank you all very much for taking the time to share your thoughts with us. Um, I know I can uh, speak on behalf of uh, John, Trudy and Christine in saying that uh, they, they're really proud of all of you and they thank you very much for taking the time out to speak to them. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you all. Thank you very much, everyone. I'll speak soon. Thank Are you, you going to say thank you for me as well? <laughs> oh, you were the star of the show. <laughs> <laughs>